Hey and welcome back to the Optimal Mobility course. Now we're going to go over macronutrients and caloric calculations and everything calculations wise is going to be done in this section. You go to your toolbox and you go to how do I calculate my macros plus calories. You can click on that. So there's a lot of steps to this process and this is not the most effective way of doing it. I'm just going to be completely transparent and honest. This is a breakdown that explains every single step of calculating your caloric intake so that you can understand what you're actually jotting down on a piece of paper. The easiest way to do this is to go to Google, type in caloric or for example, I'm doing myself. There you go. These breakdowns are done obviously through a computer, it generates, puts in the numbers, spits out values for you. Now, when it comes down to doing it by yourself, this approach is a lot more tedious, but it explains the steps in a super good, clear, easy to understand way that you know how your eating kind of works in terms of the numbers behind it. Let's go through that. First thing is setting the goal. Obviously, what is your overarching goal? And this will relate to our activity multiplier. What is your overarching goal? Insert here. Does it involve losing weight, gaining weight, or staying the same weight? That's very important. Now, afterwards, we're going to determine a dieting approach. Now, although this step is not necessary, it is a good thing to have in the back of your mind because depending on if you're trying to stay as healthy as possible, if you're gaining weight, or if you're just looking to eat super clean because you need to, having these numbers in the back of your mind is a great way. You can choose one of these and then just drop it in down here and then write out why is this approach the most realistic for you. Now we get into the calculations. Total daily energy expenditure calculation is the total amount of energy you're putting out in a day. Now there's several different components of this process, basal metabolic rate, activity multiplier, and the thermic effect of food. The thermic effect of food, which we'll go over right now. First thing is basal metabolic rate. Pretty much all it really reverts to is what, or the easiest way to remember it is, for example, if I'm sleeping in bed, how many calories are being used to run, operate my lungs, my heart, my brain, etc. So it's just energy that goes into, again, circulation, breathing, protein, synthesis, etc. The easiest way to calculate this is to just multiply your body weight times 10. Yeah, multiply your body weight by times 10 is the shortcut way to do it, but there's also other ways to do it, like you can do it through a caloric or a BMR calculator app like we did. And then yeah, either or. You can, what I personally like to do is do it through three different caloric BMR calculator apps and then divide it by three, which is an option here. Once we have our BMR, we have our activity multiplier calculations. Our activity multiplier, there's sedentary, light exercise, moderate exercise, heavy exercise, and athlete. And they're all expressed right here on the side. So the activity multiplier is the baseline consensus of the information that we're using. This is because BMR, sustained light function for operating, plus how much activity you're doing is the total sum of the energy that your expenditure is dependent upon. For example, if my BMR times my times one times my 0.2 sedentary office job and no exercise is going to give me how many calories I'm burning in a day. Hopefully that makes sense. Pretty much all you need to do here is take your BMR and then you multiply it by your sedentary, uh, light exercise, active, moderate exercise, etc., and that will give you your equal sign here. Now, when after after you get that number, you can plop you can plop it in, and then afterwards we're going to calculate the thermic effect of, of food. It's pretty much the cost of digestion of food. This is usually around 10% of BMR, and then we're going to take these three numbers and subtract 300 to 500 calories for cutting. And then we're going to add 300 to 500 calories if we're bulking. Let's do that together. I'll do it for myself first. Let's start with the basal metabolic rate calculations. I'm just going to do the shortcut method. Right now I'm 215. 2,150 calories is what I need. Now if I'm going to do this, let's just do it for one of them just to speed up the process. I do heavy exercise. We bring up our calculator here. 2150 times 1.725. 3,000... 708 calories, 0.75, whatever. Now I have my BMR and my activity multiplier for the amount of calories that I have. In terms of thermic effect, it's gonna be around 10% of BMR. 0.1 times 2150, 215 calories. 
Cool. Let's plop that into here. We have heavy exercise. My BMR we said was 2150. My thermic effective food, as we just calculated, is 215. My TD is this number plus my thermic effective food. Let's do 3709.75 plus 215 equals, there we go, 3... Or is it 3924.75? Perfect. That's my TDE. This is how many calories I need in a day to sustain my function for heavy exercise six to seven times per week at 215 pounds with a BMR of 2150. This is how many calories I need in a day to maintain my weight and everything. My weight loss targets would be this number minus, if we do minus, let's go 400, 3524.75. And then weight gain targets would be like four, 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 two, four point seven five. This number, depending on how heavy of a cut I want to do, will correspond to how many pounds I'm losing a week. For example, if my TDEE, if I'm exercising six to seven times per week, and I want to be in a caloric deficit, so I'm losing weight and feel okay. It will be in the range of like we said, three hundred to 500 calories 500 is, is way sharper weight loss whereas 300 is like more maintainable weight loss and then if i want to gain weight rapidly i'm going to go in a really big surplus and if i want to gain weight slowly and clean bulk i'm going to go in a smaller surplus for example that's a short gist of understanding what goes behind the macronutrient calculations before we just go into an app like this and just punch in a couple numbers and be like, oh, okay, I need 3,763 calories a day. Oh, cool. That's actually cool. Let's see what they're, they said 3,763. What did we get? We got 3,920. There isn't going to be consistency across the board on all these different apps because they all use different methods, but there are some apps that are better than others. And I did link them in the link tree in here. And yeah, feel free. This is again, this is more of a in-depth how do I calculate my macros process that isn't really taught? This is what personal trainers will do when they're doing your quote unquote programming. And this is what we do when we're doing our quote unquote programming for our clients as well. But there's more efficient ways to do this. I just wanted to explain all these steps that you know exactly what's going into these calculations. All right. See you later.